Today we're going to talk about roller rockers. What are they? How do they improve power? And do they work on an LS? In this video, we're going to take a look at a direct back-to-back -back comparison. We're going to compare a set of factory LS rockers to a set of aftermarket roller rockers. Now, we gain pretty good power from this change, but does that mean that every time we install roller rockers on an LS application, we're going to get big power gains? No, it's kind of application specific. But does that also mean that every time we put roller rockers on, we're going to lose power? Doesn't mean that either. Hopefully, this test and the associated explanation will allow you to decide, hey, will roller rockers help on my application? Because we're going to cover basically what a roller rocker is, what constitutes a roller rocker, how that design gains power, and then whether or not it might be applicable to your LS. It's a lot of stuff to cover. Let's get going. So the first question is, what is a roller rocker? What constitutes a roller rocker? And why isn't the factory LS rocker considered a roller rocker? Well, in my opinion, it actually is. Because in my opinion, the most important part of a roller rocker is the fulcrum or the pivot point. So uh, if you take a look at a factory small block Chevy uh, rocker, it's not a roller rocker. It has a stamp steel rocker, a small pivot ball or half of a ball, and then a retaining nut. And what happens is that pivot ball has little slots in it, it's filled with oil, and then the uh, factory stamp steel rocker slides on that. It produces a lot of friction, but if you have enough oil in there and you have the, the surface is smooth enough, it hopefully pivots fairly well. But friction is an inherent part of that design. So the way that they get rid of some of that friction is actually to put a roller bearing or some kind of bearing assembly in that pivot point. And the factory LS rocker actually has that. So it pivots on a roller assembly and that reduces friction. That reduced friction is not friction is not power being lost and by generating heat. It's actually power used to accelerate the vehicle. So there are gains from that assembly. But that pivot point, the roller portion of that pivot point, isn't the only thing that determines whether or not this is a roller rocker. For me, it's the important part. But the other part is actually the tip. Now, if you take a look at a small block Chevy or an LS rocker, they both have a similar design in terms of the tip. That tip has a sliding point, and basically a frictional surface, sets on top of the, of the valve. When it pushes the valve down, it slides back and forth across the valve tip. Now, the LS does that and the small block Chevy does that. And the way that they get rid of some of the friction associated with that sliding friction assembly is to put a roller tip on it. So that's different from the roller fulcrum. That's the pivot point. The tip is also a roller. So when they put a roller on the tip and that rocker slides back and forth across the valve tip, that roller can roll. That reduces friction. Obviously, there's oil on there too to help the situation, but that reduces friction both on the contact point of the tip and we have a roller fulcrum assembly, reduces. So the, the best deal is to have a combination of a roller tip and a roller fulcrum. That, in my opinion, is what determines whether or not a rocker is a true roller rocker or what I would call maybe for the factory LS stuff, a semi-roller rocker. So that's the definition of a roller rocker. So let's figure out how they add power. Well, as we've noted earlier, it reduces power by, I mean, it improves power by reducing friction, both at the pivot point and at the tip contact point. So reduced friction is one way that they add power. The other way that they add power is if you have a true roller rocker, and hopefully the design is correct, that it improves like stability and reduces deflection. See, what happens is while this thing is running, both the push rod and the rocker assembly, they'll deflect. So if, we're, if the camshaft is asking for the valve to open up 600 lift, if that's what the cam is, the cam plus the rocker ratio, and it wants 600 lift, if we get deflection in the rocker arm, meaning movement in the rocker arm and deflection in the push rod, that 600 lift may re be reduced down to 590 or 592 or 595, depending on how much deflection there is. So a good rocker design also helps eliminate deflection that's inherent in the system. This is a big dynamic equation, and this is important on factory rockers, especially since we're asking the LS rocker to do stuff it was never designed to do. It was designed to run with the stock spring pressure, the stock RPM range, and the stock camshaft. Now we're running factory rockers over 8,000 RPM with a lot more spring, spring rate and a lot wilder cam timing. And they were never designed by the factory to do that. 
If they were designed by the factory to do that, they could easily do that, and they do anyway. So it's a good design. But a good aftermarket roller rocker hopefully has less deflection, it has a lot of beef to it, and if we can minimize that deflection, we get all the cam lift that we're asking for, and that way it can also improve power. The final way that roller rockers improve power is with rocker ratio. Now, the factory rocker ratio on a previous small block Chevy, 1.5 to 1. So we have a certain amount of cam lift, it's multiplied by the rocker, and then the valve lift is the eventual result of the combination of those two. Small block Chevy, 1.5. Small block Ford, 1.6. Factory LS, 1.7. Good rocker ratio. Unless you have an LS7, then it's 1.8. The problem is you can't take the 1.8 from the LS7 and apply it to the previous LS1 stuff and have a, a high lift rocker ratio. You can, however, get that from the aftermarket. The aftermarket has roller rockers that are 1.7. Another common size is a 1.72, which is a little bit more rocker ratio for added cam lift. And they also have 1.8. So you effectively increase the cam lift with the rocker ratio. That's another way that they improve power. So now that we understand what a roller rocker is and how it adds power, uh, we can take a look at the results of our test. Let's get to it. In our discussion on roller rockers, I forgot to mention one very important point. That's the downside of roller rockers. Now we talked about what they do and how they add power and, and whether or not they're gonna add power to an LS, but here's one important point. Aftermarket roller rockers are generally a lot heavier than the factory rocker. So even though we have a roller pivot point and a roller tip on a factory aftermarket roller rocker, they're a lot heavier. So what's the downside of that? Doesn't, isn't heavy mean there's more strength? Yes, it can as long as the design is right and that minimizes deflection. But the problem with having a heavier roller rocker is we need to have enough valve spring to control that. As we'll see in this test, if you install a set of aftermarket roller rockers, especially something that has an increased rocker ratio, so you have two things, you have extra weight and a change in rocker ratio, the result is you need to have enough valve spring to work with that valve train weight. And if you don't, well, we'll see what will happen. Actually, what happens is valve float occurs a lot earlier. So all you need to do, and you need to do this if you're doing a cam upgrade anyway, make sure that you have enough valve spring to work with your roller rockers. Heavier weight, increased rocker ratio, more valve spring. Let's check it out. Our first test was run on a 4.8 liter LR4. This thing was basically all stock. The only change we had going in this you know, test motor was a set of forged pistons because this is the same 4.8 liter we use for almost everything. It had a set of 7cc dome pistons from JE. Stock rods, stock blocks, stock crank, all of that stuff, stock 706 heads. We even had stock valve springs on this thing, the stock camshaft, stock truck intake. This thing did have headers on it. So run in this manner, what we did was run the motor first with the factory valve uh, rocker arms and the factory valve springs. And then we installed a set of 1.72 roller rockers from Comp Cams. So let's see what happens. So first thing we did was run this thing to get our baseline, stock rocker, stock valve spring. Our 4.8 liter produced 340 horsepower and 346 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we installed the roller rockers. Roller rockers, again, 1.72 ratio. So we started to see some power gains from the rockers, but unfortunately, if you take a look out here, out at the 6,000 RPM range, we had a, <laughs> the power basically just crash. And what happened is, when you see a big change in power like that, that's basically valve float. So what happened was, the weight of those aluminum roller rockers from comp cams combined with the factory truck valve spring which is the weakest valve spring offered in any of the factory applications that valve spring just couldn't control the added weight of the rocker so if you try to add roller rockers and the additional weight even with a stock cam it's not going to work with stock valve springs so now let's take a look and see what happened when we cured this problem with a valve spring upgrade so here is our 
here. And so you can see it basically made the same power down low up until we got into the valve float area. And once we had enough valve spring in this thing and the roller rocker, 1.72, this thing produced 353 horsepower. So we picked up, you know, 10 or 11 horsepower with the roller rocker. And again, we talked about that earlier. That's a change in rocker ratio. It's a change, obviously, minimizing deflection um, and a reduction in friction. So all of this combined, and this was on an application, our stock 4.8 liter with a stock cam. Now we know that this combination with the stock truck intake and the stock cylinder heads will support a lot more power. If we just do a cam upgrade, we get a good power gain. So if you think about this, this is a very, very <laughs> small cam upgrade because of the rocker change. So this combination was actually in a position where it wanted to have, you know, any increased rocker ratio. And obviously it benefited from the other things that you get from a change in rocker, uh, the, the roller rocker combination. So this situation definitely needed the rocker upgrade and it responded, definitely made more power, but only after we had enough valve spring. Very important point. If you're going to put rockers on it, make sure you upgrade the valve springs. Otherwise, valve float. Let's get to our conclusion. Let's talk about roller rockers. Do I recommend them? Well, no, I don't usually recommend anything. All I do is test them. So I show you what they do, and then you guys get to decide if what happened when we made that change is worth whatever that change costs. You guys get to decide that. That's not on me. But let's take a look at rockers. First of all, the factory rocker used on an LS is an excellent piece. The design is amazing. It minimizes deflection. It has the important part of the roller section, the fulcrum, the pivot point. So it does reduce friction. Guys are using it above 8,000 RPM. And the reality is that a factory rocker can service about 99% of the LS public out there. So maybe there's not a need to upgrade to a roller rocker. The roller rocker, it can be argued, can be better than the factory rocker. It has a roller tip, it has a roller fulcrum, it has a lot of things going for it. But ultimately, you have to decide is this much gain, or whatever that gain is, worth whatever that cost is. I don't get to decide that, that's on you. I'm Richard Holder, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.